whole thing started in World War One. What is Cinemascope? The anamorphoscopic lens for the Cinemascope system. We see more horizontally than vertically. Cinemascope is destined to bring a new era in the motion picture. Nice flares, great image quality. We refuse to settle for something secondary. Hey folks, Chitta Fahadangs here again. I've been talking about making a bulletproof anamorphic setup for the last little bit, but I've been quite vocal against projection lenses in the past, actively avoiding a bunch of them and being extra harsh about others. So what has changed? In the last four videos, we covered a lot of groundwork and I showed you a streamlined approach to anamorphic lens picking and rig building, which will skyrocket the quality and feel of your footage. I walked you through my entire blueprint and in case you haven't watched the first four videos yet, make sure you catch up because a lot of the information I've been sharing is more valuable and more up to date than researching through a million Facebook threads and replies. You're learning how to assemble a perfect setup, understanding all the steps in the process. About this rig, it's important to know I'm extra picky about double focus setups, projection lenses, and focusers to the point that I never kept a DIY rig in spite of having reviewed dozens. I enjoyed some of them, but in the end, the trade-offs never came close to what I could get with the Iskarema, which is my favorite adapter so far. Then I decided to streamline the process like I've been talking in these videos, and the resulting build was so impressive, it pushed aside my biggest issues and allowed me to shoot amazing footage for much less than the price of an Iskarema. A few weeks ago, I realized that there's so much customization available and affordable options in the anamorphic market right now that anyone can make a killer anamorphic setup by understanding their choices in the process. Due to recent changes and new offerings, a lot of people are selling anamorphics for cheap. This enhances an already encouraging scenario. The next part of the plan was to get together with my friend Matt Leaf, who's always shooting very cool music videos and give him the rig to test drive. But Vancouver just got more intense lockdowns due to COVID and we had to adapt. I've known Matt for years, plus he has his own DIY rig. So we switched to talking about his experience of putting it together and what he's been able to shoot with it. So Matt, when did you get into Anamorphics and why? I got into anamorphic like so it's kind of a long story but I was like a really little kid and I used to watch like everything was on VHS tapes like that's how old I am and, and I would be watching a movie that I'd seen in the theater already and like Blade Runner or something I shouldn't have been watching that when I was eight but you know I, I would go to the theater it was a dollar matinee you'd watch the movie and then you'd come home and you'd watch the movie again on VHS and it'd be like this crazy box where everything was moving around and you're like well this looks nothing why did it look nothing like the movie in the theater and so it wasn't until i got a little bit older and i watched alien where i was like oh shit it's an anamorphic lens i don't know how i figured it out i asked enough people enough questions somebody told me that i was like 13 or something and then i saw pulp fiction and i was like oh that's that's anamorphic too isn't it okay um, i went to film school that never had any stuff like that and they kept telling me oh you know you're you're never gonna get to use that stuff. It's too high up, it's too expensive. You know, you're never gonna do anything that is gonna need an anamorphic lens. And I remember being like, mm, F you, you know? And I, and I saw this Koa show up on Craigslist. It was like midnight or something. He's like, I'll sell it to you for $400 if you meet me right now. And it was, was like, pouring rain and I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it. I met out the SkyTrain and he's like, you have to meet me in my car. I was like, okay. So like I had a knife under my jacket. I'm like, this guy's probably gonna rob me. And like, I get in his car, the dude's soaking wet. He pulls out this Kawa lens. It's like, I'm taking a look at it. It's like a monkey doing a math problem. I literally had no idea what I was looking at. I was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, fine. P pitch him the money, go back home. Listen, I put it on my 5D Mark II and like was taking perfect pictures pretty much right away. Like. I don't know, like, I think I wanted the anamorphic shooting so bad that double focusing wasn't hard. I was like, oh, this is what you have to do. That's like the long story of how I got this thing and how I got into shooting my own anamorphic. I had rented them a few times for bigger videos, but this is my first one and this is how I got into it. 
on the note of you've you've tried other anamorphics have you tried other adapters have you tried other cine lenses i once met you in like a, a barber shop and you were shooting with cooks um, so uh, the reason why i love the kawa so much is because the first anamorphic lenses i ever used um, were the synchro focus cinema kawas well, like the synchro focus lenses and i remember like just loving the look of the way the focus would read when you focus it and all of that stuff was just amazing with those lenses and the the, the sharpness of those lenses you don't really get it with a variable diopter, I don't know. The, the 40 is more distorted than anything you'll see in your life. Yeah, I remember that. I think it's one of the Headley videos. They were like, there's a very wide shot. Yeah. That's the 40 mil. It's so distorted. Everybody hated it and it made it to the final right. cut. <laughs> oh yeah, everyone hated it. The cinematographer was like, you can't use the shot, man. You can't use it. Like, if you look at that shot, it's like a brain, like, like, it, like the car is driving on a rainbow. And I'm like, no, that's the point of doing this. It's funny. It's like, cool. Like, nobody would ever want that. It, I love it. A lot of people like want the very clean thing and then they get whatever, I think, Cinelux lenses. But like, I always like how anamorphic is like dirty. Like, you know, you watch a movie like Killing Them Softly or something. They're, like, they're trying to make it as like, like dirty as possible even moonlight like they're they're not shooting anything that's not wide open because it doesn't look no. as good always like that about anamorphic is like you get something that is like artistic and different shooting anamorphic uh how does it complement the way that yeah, you shoot you like say you like because it makes things, things different. different how does that help with, with the stories that you're telling people always say it makes things look like um, dreamy or surreal but to me it's like if you think about the way that your eyes are working in tandem you're seeing like this really wide image that has a lot of focus fall off and a lot of distortion that you're not picking up on because your brain's fixing all that stuff to me when i put the anamorphic lens on the camera it looks like how i would just see normal life so yeah you've, you've shot a lot of you <laughs> shoot a lot of music videos how would you define your your type of shooter like are you a director cinematographer do you prefer to just be a director Bands, not like when i first started out like twenty thousand dollars is a pretty good budget for a video that you get pretty often and like i would always hire a cinematographer and that would be like totally what you would do but like the longer i've been doing this the more i've been realizing that and i can get you, like a better product by doing more myself and that's just because the budgets aren't there anymore for me like being a director and cinematographer isn't ideal at all it's, it's like, stressful to the point where like every time i go out and shoot like i'm um, i got a headache or like i'm stressing out super hard because i'm thinking about all this shit but i like it now because i've got the tools that i need to create the images that i want to create i mean like you know if i work with somebody like my friend like whatever you or uh cory mcgregor and there's like somebody doing that specific job of cinematographer and like doing the lighting and like doing the focusing and doing all that Free, shit uh, it frees me up to like be more creative with direction but when I have the camera and it's just me, the camera and my scene. I think that I break away from what normally would be a really rigid shot list and I start improvising a lot. So you're in full control of the visuals. Like that's, that's exactly what it sounds. That's the thing that I experience also when I'm doing cameras, like the director usually has a very set view of what they want to shoot. And yeah. I'm like, wait, let me, let me try a frame here and you tell me what you think. And then they're like, wow, I didn't think of that. And it's like, yeah, cause you're looking at your plan and I'm looking at what's happening without worrying about the actors. Like it's so much more freedom. Yeah, it is. But like, I love being connected to the camera. You know, filmmaking, like you look at Stanley Kubrick or somebody like that, he was doing the same thing too. He was also like, literally, no, camera's here. This is the lens I want to have. You put the lens on the camera. Like, this is what we're doing today. Uh, you know, shooting in general, it's like I've always been a person who would like, you know, you can walk in a room and you could figure out this huge lighting plan or you could just move everything 10 feet and the lighting will still I, work. I am the opposite. I come in and I'm like, okay, I got to get a light there. I got to get a light here. I got to get it <laughs> this and that. And it takes forever to set up. But then like, then we can power through it. But well, if you look at what Ochi Domo does, like you look at what Tim does, it's like, he, he doesn't even own a light. Yeah. You know that? Every single thing Tim puts on screen, he's never had a light. Amazing. And you'd never look at his stuff and think, oh, that needed lights, right? Yeah, no, never. his stuff is amazing. Never. What would be your advice for someone starting into anamorphics today, right? Now? Know that you really want it before you do it. If you're not using it as like a creative tool, it's, it's not, not going to be worth it. Like, I like what you do with the anamorphaking because mm -hmm. I think for most people, that's the look that they want and they're going to get it easier and it's going to be a lot less hassle to do it that way and it's still going to look like 
arguably, if you're new, it's going to look better than if you had a scope because you're not going to know really all of these things that can go wrong when shooting a scope, you know? And so I think anamorph faking is like 90% of people that haven't gotten into it yet, I would try that first. Thank you. It would be awesome if people tried that first. There's a lot of resistance. It's funny. Everybody's like, ah, it's not the real thing. I would rather spend way more money on this and then be dissatisfied with the results than trying it out for cheap. <laughs> Either anamorph fake it first, and then you really like that, then rent something, and then you really like renting it. Okay, now look for something like this, I would say. Or you got the money and you have the micro four thirds or whatever, get the vase. But what's yeah. your favorite thing about your rig? And what were like the key upgrades since you got the Koa? What were the key things that changed your, your shooting forever? And the you... favorite thing about my rig is the blue and purple Kawa. I didn't know how special this was until I started realizing everyone else had an amber Kawa. As soon as you find something that works, it's done. You're, you're happy. You don't have to keep tweaking once you have something that works. All I, all I know is that there's a clinical look to the one I put this ice lens on that I'm not into it. And then I put the Helios or the Jupiter on. I'm like, oh my God, that's what anamorphic looks like. I just don't have a better way to describe you've it. But You've shown me through the years several things that looked amazing. I don't know. I just remember a lot of stuff like the Pack AD video where I think you use the rangefinder to yeah. destroy the image as a concept. Uh, yeah. And all those, all those things that you shot with your Koa and even with the cine lenses that you enjoyed and, and you got something out of it. So There's one project where I use this lens double focus and then we use those Cook, um, those Cook Lomo Van Diemen's in the same video. And everybody said when that video came out, like all like the techies, like all the guys at the rental shop were like, they're like, wait a second, that's not the Van Diemen Lomo. That looks way better than that. And they kept saying that the Kawa looked better than the Van Diemen Lomo's look. Yeah. And then a lot of people kind of say like, oh, you know, um, these projection lenses aren't good for anything but projecting. I'm like, well, that's only if you're projecting negative energy, man, because these are, <laughs> these are incredible. Yeah. 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 No, and it makes sense because you've been using this lens for, what, six, almost seven years now, and it's consistently the same. So you know exactly how it behaves and you yeah. know where it's stronger, you know what's just not that strong, what matches well and what doesn't. Like you've had lots of time with it to figure out what you really like about it. The only thing that I, that, I, that I would want to change about this lens is the flocking the, uh, and the internal reflection. But, you know, you get the veiling glare a little bit. That's yeah, the I'm going to try to paint the inside of my Elmo 2 with that totally matte black paint. So yeah. if that works, uh, theoretically, the construction is the same. Me? Uh, thank you so much. And it was, and it was a really cool conversation. I think we, we talked about stuff that I haven't heard before, and it was really oh. great. Well, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Thank you, guys. If you like what you're seeing so far, hit that like button. And this conversation with Matt felt very familiar in both aspects of trial and error, but also finding the gear that works well for you. And that's an aspect that's very often overlooked. This was one of the many conversations that motivated me to start building the Anamorphic Cookbook course, which turned out to cover way more ground than just DIY setups. The cookbook is launching in a few days from now. You'll be able to watch over my shoulder as I show you how to pick a great anamorphic lens, assemble your rig with all these pieces and optimize camera settings. If you're a member of the channel, I'll also be there to help you along the way and make sure you get results. Imagine how much time and money you'll save compared to trying to figure this out by yourself. As you imagine all that work, it's easy to realize it would be impossible for me to hold everyone's hands. To ensure I can provide all the support and help needed, I'm setting up a consulting program that you can check at anamorphiccookbook.com and book your session. I should also remind you that members of the channel get more support and can join the Anamorphic on a Budget Discord group where they can ask questions and get answers from myself and other people in the same journey. You can become a member through the join button below. This is the best content I've ever put together. And I wouldn't be surprised if lens prices start going up fast. 
To get updates as they come, subscribe to the channel now and sign up for the mailing list at anamorphiccookbook.com. The link is also in the description. In the next video, I'll address the many questions I've been getting about the cookbook course and explain how you can get the full experience. I'll also share how this course is different from other approaches you might have seen before. For now, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you on the last episode of this series. Chitta Fahadangs, out.